some basic ERPs and, and what they are able to provide, what information they can aid, and, uh, and why would it be nice to include them in our assessment or in our research programs. Um, so a little bit of understanding what an event-related potential is, uh, as you know, most of you know, it's an average segment of the signal of the EEG related to an event. So pretty much that's explained when you hear the word event related potential. And what we do is that we will take a segment of the EG and we're going to cut it off and we're going to, we're going to put it in a lot of, of, of uh, EEG cut off all together in an average. And then we're going to take the timing after the event was shown and we're going to see how the brain reacted to that event specifically. And by the average, we will create a waveform. We will have certain characteristics depending on the, on the stimulus, on the design of the task, on the difficulty, and all different variables will determine the morphology that the event-related potential will have. As you can see here, uh, and uh, you can see that it's different, actually not only because of the different tasks or the different things that were done, they're different altogether, but also they're different on the sites of the electrode where you're taking it up. So if you take it from FC, if you take it from CC, if you take it from PC, they all will have different waveforms because of where the, the main generator of the ERP is being produced. So this will be a P300, and P300 has a more parietal uh, approximation because it's the P300 is mostly in most of the tasks produced on the parietal lobe. So as you can see, the peak will be bigger on the parietal lobe. It will be less bigger on CC, and as far as it goes, it will diminish its 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 amplitude when when it finally gets to the lines. Uh, I'm sorry? What are the dotted lines and the straight lines? Um, yes, that the dotted lines, I believe that would be, um, let me see. I think the dotted lines would be the, the probably, I, I don't have the, uh, this, this diagram I was only showing for, for understanding, but I guess the dotted line would be the control group and the other one would be the subjects. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I'm not really focusing on the study, what they did. I'm just using the diagram for, for, for the explanation of what an ERP would look like and how it would, it would be get it to. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, but I'm not really sure, but probably the, the straight line, it's the, it's the experiment, it's the control group, mm -hmm. and the dotted line, I think it would be the subjects. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and so in here, what the test that you would you would see is um, a go no go task, a not full task, and a and a swifting change. This would be similar to a Wisconsin task in, in in all of them. And depending on the task, as you can see, the waveform will change. But also the waveform will change not only because of the task, but also because of the difficulty that the task has. So if you put an easier oddball the waveform will change. If you put a harder oddball task, the waveform will, its amplitude will grow, all right? And so I wanted to ask you guys right now if you are familiar with what an oddball task, what a go-no-go, -go, and what a change task would, would be. Are you familiar with that? I don't know what is cambio or uh, oddball test. But this can be a test and oddball test. You're, you're okay. So oddball test is a task design that is really often used, but in research especially, which um, which you try to measure mostly attention with an oddball task. Uh -huh. All right, and change. It's a. It's like a Wisconsin. Are you familiarized with the Wisconsin task? Wisconsin part uh, sorting test, yeah. right? Yeah, also, and that, that's the that's the Wisconsin test, and that's the the one that you see there on the first on the first on the first. It's, it's equal to the Cambio test. Yeah, exactly. It's the change. Oh. 
So yeah. this is an adaptation of the Wisconsin test as Thomas was explaining. So the rule changes. When the rule changes, it produces a P300, and that works. that's what you're trying to measure. And then on the oddball test, you have a constant stimulus appearing on the screen. You have to react to one that is slightly different to the one that is normal or common that is being presented. And when it's changed, you react, and by that reaction, it triggers it triggers what the what, what the P300 would, would look like. All right. So we we can we can make a meeting for you to to get familiarized with what the or or we can make webinars as well to to mm -hmm. for you to understand what uh what the task will look like and how would would they be done and, and yeah, everything be great. Right. but we're not going to focus on that right now because i'm just trying to make a basic introduction to what an erp is and how is it's done and and everything and so the problem with the erp is that because it's actually really really small because the brain while you're making the events it's actually worrying about breathing it's actually worrying about cardiac respiration it's worrying about several other things are happening at the same time while you're making erps so the next concepts are really important for you to be able to get nice erps because you want to take the event that is it's um really related to the event that you're that you're you're presenting to the stimulus, and if you don't do it right, you won't be getting that. And that's why Thomas was telling you that uh, like 20 milliseconds, it's like a lot when you're making ERPs, but a lot it's it's actually really a lot. So you have to the noise and signal ratio is what you have to reduce to be able to this to do this. You have to have a clean signal. If you don't have a clean signal, you will be able to get that. If you have any type of static, if you have any type of, of weird movements inside the EEG, you won't be able to have the, a good ERP. You will be only looking at statics when you finally make the average. Then the filtering is really important. Getting out all the dust, all what's not needed when you, 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 you put um, everything that it's above 50 hertz and below... Um, 10 or, or, or 20 hertz, it's, it's just flickering. It's, it's a static that you're getting from the environment where you're in because you're not inside a paradigm um, cage. And because of that, the, the, uh, your cell phone, the static from the, from, the, from the wires, the electricity from the light, all of them produce, for, produce noise. And you have to filter all these to be able to get it out from what an ERP would look like. And then what we're doing and what we're uh, implementing here, there's different ways to do this, but this is the way that we're going to do it. It's the independent component analysis, which MATLAB does it for you to just predict the system and it will, it will subtract, it will subtract the noise out of the equation without taking out the, without taking out the segment of the EEG, which actually, it's actually something, something really, really, really good. All right, and uh, once once you were able to clean the image, you make the average, and then you are able to analyze an ERP. But what do you analyze inside an ERP? What do you measure? What 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 gives you information of an ERP? Well, normally what you would do is measure the amplitude and its latency, the time that it took to produce, and the the amplitude that that it grows. In, in your patient or in your subject. And why is this important? And this is where we come on and we provide a, uh, a background, what it's a database that will give you the information about what's normal. So I bet most of you have heard about what a P300 is. And you can imagine that a P300, it's a positive event being produced at 300 milliseconds. And so at 300 milliseconds, more or less, if you, when you make the average and you produce a P300 task like, you will produce a P300 that will, in maximum peak, positive peak would be at the 300 milliseconds. If it's farther away, sorry, yeah, go ahead. You were asking something? Uh, at baseline, the P300 is measured from baseline or uh, peak peak. Well, you, you can actually measure it uh, e either way. You, you can measure it from baseline to the to the to the top one from P to P. Yeah. They're both different way to measure. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, but, but, 
normally the one that we use it's baseline to pick but you can make you can measure it in in in, in both ways okay that is that is something that is dependent of the of the laboratory laboratory action of the lab the lab decides how do you do it you also as well you can put the positivity downward or upward you can put here you can see that there's a minus five that means the negative are being shown down but there's a, 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 a whole bunch of labs that says no no the negative the negativity should be looking upward because what's happening on the brain is a depolarization of the neuron and that and that's actually a negativity so that should be looking upward and looking downward mm -hmm. but that's something that the labs decide right uh, I, I really enjoy or I like it a lot more when the positivity is looking up because it, it's easier to see. Mm -hmm. We neurologists normally say if it's going down, it's positive, and if it's going up, it's negative. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, yeah. The exactly. other thing I wanted to ask as neurologists, we mostly are measuring latencies because amplitudes are somehow. Uh, difficult to, to measure because very difficult um, uh, situations may be with the scalp and anything. Do you, the P300, you are measuring the shift right or left or you're measuring the amplitude you get after the test? You're measuring both of them and, 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 you're, and you're focusing on the amplitude and on, on an ERP I guess that when a neurologist measures the the an EEG a raw EEG, yeah. what he's what he's looking at are different things to what you look when you're using a, an ERP, especially cognitive, okay. evoke related potentials. Okay. Because as I was I was I was showing you at the beginning of the presentation, you could look how different would a, would a, would the amplitude be depending on the task that you are presenting if the task is more difficult normally the amplitude of the waveform will be bigger because it, it it's allocating more neurological resources to the processing of the task that you're looking at okay does that make sense yeah yeah and so because of that the amplitude is actually it's actually something that you really want to look in on ERP in other things, probably it's not as in, as important, but in ERP it would be definitely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and so that that's what you what you would try to to see. And there are different there are different types of of evoke related potentials, and there, there are different types to do with and different ways to produce them. And and well, and you've got classification of all of them. They're what we call exogenous and endogenous. They're, but we're not going to get lost in, in, in all of that. I'm, I'm just going to focus on things that are really important to us as cognitive clinicians. Because what we're trying to see is cognition at the end of the day. And that's what we do in your feedback normally. We focus on, on, on producing changes on ADHD or producing patients on, on, on uh, how do you say, on uh, OCD, et cetera. So, yeah. So we, we mostly focus on, on visual and auditory and auditory processes, right? We present uh, sounds or we present images or, or, or we present words and words are, are, are also being understood by the visual pathways. So, so these are the most important components for us. Mm -hmm. And what type of, of components do we have? And this is some basic understanding. If, so what do you think that a P100 would reflect? A positive pix that it's being ha that it's happening on the first 100 milliseconds of the brain since the stimulus was presented. What do you think that that way that positive pix is? It's 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 about. Well, what is it about? Or the yeah, what what's it about? What do you think? I don't know what's the question. This we are using very often, especially in multiple sclerosis patients. That the P100 is shifted uh, to more than 100. Uh, we are, okay, we are looking at the end, what you are looking, what you are saying, N75. This is, for us, it's the uh, most important thing. When the visual signal is uh, uh, from the retina, it is processed by the um, 
occipital brain. This you see with the N75. We call it P75 or P100. Yeah. This we often are checking yeah, for, for brain function. Visual, uh, the visual pattern at N70 and P100. We, we, we do it with the, exactly. uh, with the, with the uh, 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 screen where squares are changing, black and white. This is a very common, this is a very common uh, um, test we use in urology. Yeah, exactly. In, pot, uh, potentials. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in neurology and neurophysiology and well, I know uh, in a visual uh, doctor, what, what he would do is he would look at the, he would look at the early components and what the yeah. early components are showing are the basic functioning and basic processing, right? right? So, as, as he was saying, it's the, the, at the uh, occipital brain. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, well, this is, um, this, is not, uh, this is, this um, is, uh, and are you, do you look at this? This is an, a really interesting, this is what, um, sorry, what's your name? The Good stuff. This also it's we really, use very often. Yeah, it's really hard to pronounce that. So, yeah. So, the auditory component, well, what it does in a neurology, what he does yeah. is it's looking at all the pigs yeah. on the auditory pathway yeah. all yeah. the way to the brain to be able to determine if something is wrong. All right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and all of these are the early components, right. and we're not going to focus on them. We're going to focus on the later on components. Yeah. We're gonna go. We're gonna go more to the peak for the three hundred milliseconds happening, which are cognitive components. With our, it's the interpretation of the brain to the stimulus, not just the basic functioning of it, but what's happening later on after. After you have already looked the image, after you have heard the word or the sound, the brain it's it's making processes, making interpretation, and that's what we will be looking at with the P three hundred and later on components. Or even even the uh, even earlier components, but not much as P seventy five or P hundred. All right. So this is a this is a basic idea for you to understand. Early components are more um, physiological components. Later components are more cognitive components. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what capital allows us to do is to focus on that component and, and develop all these tasks, tasks that you have been hear hearing of, all the tasks that I have uh, explained to you before. The switch task, the no-go task, the oddball task, and the Stroop task, and all different tasks. All of them will measure a specific brain function and we'll give you a physiological marker of that brain function and how it's going on and what is happening inside there. Mm -hmm. And so what we have been working for over a year to try to produce is to allow to connect your neurofeedback software and an event-related potential markers and export that information to MATLAB and in, a, in about half an hour produce ERPs that will give you information of the physiological aspects of what you're looking at on your EEG. And we have made it really easy. It's, a, it's an easy task design. It's an easy and, uh, it's an easy and friendly, friendly software. It's a friendly user software that will allow you to do a whole bunch of different tasks like Stroop tasks, CPT tasks, MBAC tasks, Oddball tasks, Simon's tasks, et cetera, et cetera. And all of that only with one software, which is um, which is Thomas Software Capito. And so uh, this is um, the the things that the software do. And as you guys, I, I don't know how much Thomas have telling you about, but you would need to have at least two computers, at least two computers to be able to produce this this task. You need a. a, a you need to have a desktop computer and a laptop, or two desktop computers, or two laptops, and one of them have to be has I to have. And to cut short, the interrupt you. Sorry. Um, with when you have one computer which has enough power, you can only use it uh, do it with one computer. 
we have, um, this is an update. I just tested. Uh, it's possible with one computer. It's possible. Yes, but uh, mm -hmm. did, did, uh, did you analyze the measurements? Uh, this is what, 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 I, what I just sent you, but we can talk about this later. Please continue. The, 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 ones that we, the ones that we did were with only one computer? Yes, the, the, the last measure I sent you was one computer. All right, that, well, that, well, that's great. I, I thought there was two computers. No, no, just one computer. Okay, well, it's yeah. great to hear that. It seems that we have making it so good that we only need one computer now. That's great. Absolutely. That's what okay. it is. <laughs> all right, so what will happen, this is the raw EEG, all right? So in here, we only have three channels because that was the SAS that I was doing. But in here, you will have the 24, 30, well, the 24 or uh, the four or whatever channels that you're using in your test. And Capital will present the marker where the stimulus is being present, and then your brain will respond to that. And then we will cut this in epochs, and, and you will and you would log, <coughs> you will make the average of these inside MATLAB with EEG lab, and you will produce the ERPs, which I have shown you later on. And um, well, this is something of the development. This is the setup. But I, I think that we will look this later on, not right now at this moment. Later on, we will, we will really give a look at this. And probably there will be a webinar in which Thomas will show you how to set everything up step by step. Right, Thomas, we're probably going to take a video camera of you setting everything up, right? Yes, yes. I'm preparing that already. Mm -hmm. And so this is what, what, what it's shown. This is what capital does. This is a raw EG. Um, you take the response data, the cognitive data, the omission, the commission errors, the mark stimuli, and then you, 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 you have both, you have both measure it. You have the EEG measurements and you also have the capital cognitive assessment measurements from the response times of, of each subject, as you can see here. In here, you can see that he made a mistake of a, um, this is a commission error. This is an omission error. And all of, all of the rest of them are, are correct responses to each of, of each different stimuli and so on and so on. Okay. And uh, well, this is how it looks in MATLAB, the epoch processing. Uh, the red line is the event marking appearing. The this is the previous uh, stimulus presentation from the epoch from mine of 100 to uh, 400 or so on. And here, in here you can see, you can already see a little bit of the P300. You can see that it's higher in amplitude from the rest of them happening in the, mostly from the 300 milliseconds of it. And, and this is the, this is the, Brainmaster GUI, which has, which has, what he has done is making a step-by-step -step line on how to produce an ERP. So you just have to follow these steps. The software will do it for you. And at the end of, of these steps, you will create a report and you will have the ERP already done. So this is how easy it is. This is how is easy it is for us now to do this. You can see here, you, you mark the event, you introduce the event, you run ECA, the independent component analysis, you view the components, you remove the components that are wrong, you filter the data, you create the ERP1, you create the ERP2, you produce them and you create the difference ERP, which will loop the waveform that I was showing to you at the beginning. And the only thing that you guys have to do is follow the simple steps and you will get an ERP and you will be able to look if your subject has a bigger amplitude on a P300 or you have a, a slower amplitude on a P300. But all of it is not, but all of this is not actually important if, if we don't have something to, to compare it to. And here is what, where I really want to show you guys. This is what I really want you guys to look at. There are se several studies, several clinical stories about the clinical utility and the control of variability that an evolved related potential will be able to show on your patients. And, and this, is a, this is actually a really easy article because it's the, the, um, on dementia, and dementia patient and normal subjects. And you can see... What is the X, uh, the X axis? What is X axis? Uh, well, sorry, what? Uh, what is the X axis? 
the numbers 10, 20, 30, 40 to 90. Okay, yes. Um, this is, uh, let me see, this is the age. Okay, so this is the but age. You've got estimated patients with 20 years of age, isn't it? Well, w what's going on, this is the, the age from the diagnostic of the, of the disease, ah, uh -huh. advancing from them. Okay, oh, I don't. Uh, I 18 years. Okay, non demented. Okay, demented patients. I cannot believe that there are demented patients uh, with the age of 20 or less than 20. Very, very rare. Yeah, I, uh, this presentation, I have not used it as a long time. Yeah. Mm, I don't remember what the age on here is. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what and it is. The straight lines, this is standard deviation. Yes, yes, the straight lines oh, are the standard deviation. deviation. Okay. And, and, the, and the, the milliseconds yeah. are response to, to the stimulus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yeah, we're going to have to to give it a try and, and understand this diagram without really knowing what the age in here means because I don't remember. I would have yeah. to go and look the article, which is a, which a John Polish article. I would have to go look at it. And yeah. it's actually a, a review. But what you, what, what you are able to see is normal subjects are inside the standard deviation yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be expected. Non-dimension patients with a neurological disease are yeah. a little bit, it's a, a little bit, you, you can see they have a little bit yeah, of yeah. movement. Psychiatric patients like OCD and different patients are inside as well, the standard deviation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And dimension patients are here. They're all responding outside what would be expected. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very interesting. On the, on the EED. So this is yeah. something that uh, event-related potential are able to show you. Their yeah. most dementia patients are responding on after 400 milliseconds and above. Their P300, it's not being produced inside that 300 millisecond standard time. I mean, yeah. all people will, will react at 300 milliseconds. Their brain will produce a P300 inside the 300 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Dementia patient won't. They will be their their P three hundred will appear on four hundred milliseconds and above. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. All right. And yeah. so, w w what else? Well, this is an independent. Uh, well, this is something. Um, what the independent component protocol in neurofeedback produced by Kropotkin. Mm -hmm. So, so now what we're doing is that we're introducing our ERPs to what P300 looks like and what P300 is. And this is something that Kropotov have been working on for several years. And it's getting to some really interesting, really interesting data. And what he has found out in different articles is that with nearer feedback, you're able to change the waveform of an ERP after several sessions. And you make an ERP at the beginning of the nearer feedback um, uh, training and then you you do it after 20 sessions of near feedback and what you're looking is the morphology changes at least in HDHD it changes morphology after you when you make the pre and you make the post the morphology of the P300 ch changes in their in different variables which you are measuring in it so that's something that's really interesting to see because what you're saying is when you're feedback you are modifying the brain reaction, okay. and if and if you know that you're measuring attention on an EHD person, you are improving its attention, and you're measuring with the with an ERP. So it's a patient not responding to you to the treatment. You run the ERP, and you see maybe the waveform is not changing. So maybe you have to change the protocol of neurofeedback that you're doing to it to better produce a change on the ERP or in the brain of the subject, and you're able to see if you're changing or not. It's morphology, and this is something actually really interesting, and it's more accurate than the, Q, than the QEEG. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. And so... <clears throat> so what, uh, what did they train with, with um, neurofeedback to improve the P300 latency? I, I think uh, that they just did beta training, right? Yep, that's right. Okay. So they en enhanced beta, or they decreased it. You know that depends. That depends on actually on every subject that you have, because some ADHD subjects 
uh, may need decrease on beta activity and some of them will need increase in beta activity. And I know that they may personalize, um, they make personalized protocol for each subject. And that's actually really hard to investigate because of, because of the heterogeneity that you have on, on your subjects makes really hard for you to get really yes. good measurements yes. here. And research in this area, it's actually really thrilling because of these. It's really hard to get a nice or really good article with a, with a big sample with some yes. nice measurements and nice protocols because of that, because of what you were asking. But you, you right. could, for example, do just uh, set square training. To yeah, yeah. For example, in here, in here, you can see a bunch of articles that are measuring exactly what I'm telling you guys, and okay. from from different trainings that they did on 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 uh, on HGG. Some of them made training in theta and theta beta. Some of them on C, beta and theta. Some, uh, some of them were in really individualized, like this article from Orange Street Works that was made in 2012, that make us, um, this is um, SMR training, right? Okay, and the plus means that the latency actually decrease or increase? No, the plus means that they, that they found um, morphology changes on the on the article in Jensen and in Algrim, they did not find changes on morphology of the waveform, uh, and the oh. rest of them they did find changes. Interesting. Yeah. So in most, as you can see on this diagram, most of them changes had were able to, or amplitude or both. It, in in here, it depended on the what the article was focusing in. Uh, most of them were focuses in, in amplitude and latency, but there were some of them that were measuring uh, different things that are not specifically that. Okay. Uh -huh. Because I think this test is a uh, uh, lot of dependent on the attention uh, that the testing person can produce. If he's tired, it may be less. If he's awake or stimulated by coffee, it may be better. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. And, and that's why when you make a, a research and when, when you're really familiarized with research, you know that when you select a sample, you explain to the subjects, please, when you, when you do the ERP, um, you will not remove the, uh, the medication because that, will, that won't matter. If you remove the medication, it, you okay. will still have a brain that it's, it's contaminated with the medication because it has been there for a long time. But you tell them, Please sleep well. Please uh, do not drink coffee. Please, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And okay. then the sample size will diminish. This um, I don't I don't know what the word in English is, but it in Spanish is sesgo. Uh, you will diminish the the. Uh, it's it's really complicated for me to say this in English. The Gauss bell. Do you know what the Gauss bell is? Oh yeah, the Gauss bell. All right. So yes. okay. by by making the sample bigger you will be able to reduce what you were that what you were saying right now because the sample is it's actually really bigger it, yeah. it reduces the, the variance will reduce the, the variance yes exactly exactly mm -hmm. so if, mm -hmm. if, if the sample is four times as large you you will have the half of the variance uh -huh. exactly very good impressive all right, uh, so, and, and what's happening on, on right now is that there are different testing and, and everybody's trying to, to run to normative data and validity. Everybody's running to get this done because now you need to get the normative data and saying this is what normal is expected and this is what you can see on your feedback clinicians and, and somebody will produce this on the next year. Kropotov, it's already been working really hard just to get the uh, recognition and the, but, and the right but the validity to their, to their, to their subjects. And, and that's what we're trying to do as well. We're trying to get a normative data to, to be able to, to compare the ERP that you produce with your patients to what's, what's expected out of, the, out of the norm. And as you know, this is something that it's really difficult to do, and, and, and it, but it's really important. It's really important. And well, these are some data that we did on on all, on on a research that we presented at ISNR this year, and uh, but.
but I, I don't I don't want to go on on detail uh, to that. I I, ha I actually have to I actually have to leave at this moment. I have a I have a meeting on a on a couple of minutes, and mm -hmm. I, I hope that you guys enjoy what I show you. I I hope that it was illustrating, oh, absolutely. Exactly. and it it, it, it was cool. just a was just a basic introduction of what ERPs are and what they're able to be applied of and what, what they can do. And that's what I wanted to show you guys.